then you get the message and then once you get the message hang up the phone so yeah. that's basically the intention of it yeah sweet all right so here we go the play one mindset and, and the game is life the theory. game is life theory so the, for those we'll make it clear straight away for those who don't know what the game is life is when we say that the game is life is an eight part book series by terry shot um you can get it on audiobooks or you can get the physical copies it's basically the the book series that got us on this journey originally i feel um it's worth reading it's worth rereading as well uh, and there's a lot of different theories about simulation theory and game theory that you you can read upon joe rogan's a big proponent nick bostrom elon musk guy Ritchie, the film yeah. director there's many, a lot of many people engage in this kind of thinking this kind of mindset and we've got so much out of it by seeing everyone else engage in it taking bits and pieces and adding out adding what's ours as well and just growing with this this uh mindset this philosophy and we want to share it share it now so all right so we'll, we'll try and make it as clear as possible uh and it's gonna be just nice and quick we'll just get to the point with everything and explain how it's helped us and how it can help you and why we're a proponent of it in the first place I'll just, i just want to highlight on that so josh and i engage in the game is life theory and the play one mindset and we find it so deeply truly valuable i can't stress that enough so we find it so valuable and we we really think so many other people can benefit from how we think so yeah we're going to share it and hopefully everyone can get the most out of it yeah so to begin with what are so to, let's first differ between simulation theory and game theory okay so simulation theory is a lot more in depth you get a lot more um, physicists and scientists involved it's about the fact that everything we see in front of us could actually just be a simulation we could be part of a simulation whatever the purpose of that simulation is we're a part of it whereas game theory is more this is perhaps simulated but it's a game whether we consciously put ourselves into this game or what or not it's a game that can be treated as such treated as a game and that's where we get our our game theory from there's more to it but that's the basis that's the basic difference between yeah. so simulation theory is more the math mm -hmm. and more um the existence of reality mm -hmm. in, in terms of what it's made of yep. made from yep. and <coughs> the purpose is still a bit unknown but you could say you could easily say that everything in front of you is not organic yeah. it's simulated to you and this you know is I mean? this is nothing new philosophers have engaged in this yeah, for quite a quite exactly. some time exactly it's yeah. just a, another proponent of the origins of the universe yeah. was it big bang was it god was it simulated yeah. it's very same the terminology is obviously different but yeah. it's the same sort of principles very quickly descartes said it would be is this how do we know that this is not the creation of some evil mastermind and we're just trapped in something so people have engaged in this simulation created reality thought process for a while game yeah. theory is different yes and i think that the more that technology booms and gets better and better the more that simulation theory mm -hmm. makes sense because either we're going to create one ourselves and then if we can do that who's to say that we aren't already yeah. in one do you know what i mean so josh and i call our own thought process on game theory as the game is life yes which you'll yeah hopefully engage in and learn more about so so cool so the fundamentals and concepts of a game uh, and what, it, what things that certainly have to happen if a game was to be a real thing. So with each game, you always have, straight off the bat, you have an objective. You have an objective of each and every game that you will ever play. And then our proponent of the game is life. Our theory that what the game objective is, this whole reality you call Earth, would be, uh, I would base mine mostly off of the Game is Life book mm. series because it says basically that this whole Earth and simulated thing that we're doing is just to gain as much experience and knowledge as you can to take back into the real world so wherever the real world is out of this and we carry that knowledge and experiences with us to the person that we are outside think about one big learning module that you plug into live a live a lifetime and plug out you've seen it in pop culture with rick and morty where rick plugs into a game lives this whole crazy life and exits except he doesn't take much out of it except for entertainment Yep. We're saying that imagine this was something but from Josh's perspective that you jumped into, learnt through your active involvement in the game or whatever, however else you play it, exit and that's what you come out with. Yeah, yeah. and you remember it and you can yeah. live multiple lifetimes and remember all of them as the person that you are outside of this. Yeah. So you're a better human society. So, so yeah, with, with that, there's that, that's number one. So every single game shares these qualities whether or not 
you're conscious of these things existing in a game or, or, or principles, they're, they're definitely there. One of them is the fact that there's an objective. The, the next one is that you need to actually try the principle of effort. So engage in the game, put a foot forward and begin to try to play the game. Then from there, you've also got number three, which is the principle of upgrading, the principle of leveling up. Uh, sorry, number three with the principle of learning. So learning the landscape. So whatever game it is you play, think about GTA. Uh, you learn and become familiar with the environment. Think about Call of Duty. You would get familiar with the map. Think about a racing game. You get familiar with the racetrack. And then also you get familiar with yourself, your own character's um, benefits, attributes that are positive, attributes that need to be worked on. So the, the idea of learning is, is a massive principle in all games as well. You, don't, you enter the game and you don't clock it on the first go. You've got to learn. Then the other principle that I the aforementioned one was the principle of leveling up, upgrading. So it's something Josh and I love to talk about because it says whatever tools you enter into the game with are tools that you can either discard, level up and acquire new ones. If you think about the car game, car racing game, you enter the car game with a base level car, whatever the, the backstory is, is, reg is irregardless. Now you level up the car. You level up the car, you add new tires, you add some whatever else, I'm not a car guy, <laughs> you add whatever it is you need to win. Yeah. Um, or if, a, if it was a war game, Call of Duty, you'd equip yourself with different weapons, level up your weapons, level up your own character. That's another aspect of the game. And then, um, so there we go. From number one, we have objective, and then stepping forward, taking an actual effort. Number two, num number three, we've got learning. Number four, we have leveling up and re-equipping, reacquiring, upgrading. And the best part that we talked about is the element of um, a re-attempted effort. All games involve this because if it's not like if you fail the game in Call of Duty, you can't play Call of Duty anymore. There's, there's, there's an effort. You might try something to win. You might mess it up. You get to come back and try again. You don't just stop because you messed up. You didn't pass the first level on the first go. Um, these are elements that are in every single game and that is a big part of game theory thinking that okay these elements applied are applied to every other game they would also apply to life as a game and that's the standpoint from which we we observe yeah yeah so i guess that's the basis of why we believe it could be because you can literally treat life as a game as you would any other um and as we said i, I mean that big first one the objective of what the game is mm. will really determine about your vision of what you do with your life yeah. and your your object or your goals could be directed towards this so i mean a lot of people get if you're not clear on any of your goals at the moment i would strongly advise that be the first thing you do but i also advise that if you let's say that you, let's say you either have faith in religion or you don't have faith at all if you put some sort of faith into treating life as it's a game regardless of what your other faiths are you will have many benefits mm -hmm straight off the bat you're going to eliminate a lot of your stresses so a lot of things that you may stress about now money is always a big one maybe family issues work's not going so well yeah. um, maybe you, you're not as fit as you'd like to be very common ones that always happen straight away if you tell yourself life's only a game it's like well why am I even stressed all this isn't that yeah. much of a big deal anyway do you know what I mean it's and just a game and we don't want to say <clears throat> we don't want to say that these aren't real things to stress about because if life is a game then we all know for sure that this would be the hardest game that's out there because there are so many things that need to be done so many improvements it's not an easy game to play but it's a game nonetheless it's a simple one when you look at those principles and what we're saying is that adopting that mentality or that outlook it's, it's straight away what it gives you is a little bit of freedom because all these real life stresses they are important like you said not having money to pay rent or not going well at work and thinking damn well the consequences are I'm no longer a provider I can't look after myself on my own it's like these are real worries but when you when you step back and you're able to observe it as a game it gives you that massive advantage of a little bit of freedom and in that freedom it's not that you're just kicking back then you can take real steps forward so you step back you go okay this isn't going this isn't going right this isn't going well what, what do I need to do I need to learn more about myself. I need to learn more about the landscape, about this game. I need to learn more about the other players that I interact with. 
I need to upgrade and equip the necessary things that I need to upgrade and equip. I may need to discard some things. You start realizing that, wait, I can apply certain things here, certain principles, and slowly but surely work my way up to whatever my next objective is. And in setting those objectives, you don't need a, an overarching goal for the rest of your life. You definitely need some goals, some big goals. But in reality, these, can only, these, are, these are really just side missions because the end goal is to just live as best you can to the fullest of your potential. And in the process, set massive goals and accomplish those things. Which will in turn help you on your main objective. On your main objective, yeah. which is to fulfill your potential. Yeah. So yeah. side missions, those goals you have along the way that are always changing mm. yeah, as your interests change and as you get older and your, your character becomes more experienced, your, your major goals are going to change. But it always leads into the overarching goal of living to your fullest potential and learning and growing as much as you can while you're here. And that, <clears throat> and in that, that's something that Josh and I, it's it's massive to us. Is the, is this next idea I'm about to drop? In every single game, who and what you enter the game with, that player that is playing level one, is not the same player that wins level ten or clocks the game. Because as you go through the game, to get to each level, you need to level up your character. If you're playing Call of Duty with base level guns and equipment and whatnot, you're not winning in the hardest maps or against the best players because you need to have better equipment, you need to actually level up yourself. So you have to also understand that where you currently are isn't where you're, currently, isn't where you're going to end up. It's just where you currently are. It's just a particular position in time. So as you proceed through the game, and as we level up and get better, we're going to end up being the person that we look forward to meeting in the future, that version of ourselves, is very different to who we are now. At, in essence, you're still the same. It's not that you discard yourself and become someone new, but in a sense, you also do do that because you grow, you learn. That whole process of trying, learning, failing, reapplying, upgrading, retrying, throughout that, you evolve. That's growth. That's the that's one of the most important things in this game. You need to grow in order to progress. And we all know that from who we were maybe even five years ago, let alone, or maybe even a year ago, is very different to who we are now because of the growth. Throughout the year, you're going to grow. You're going to move forward. Exactly. Yes, exactly that. And uh, I'll give a quick little background of, of what the game is life entitles because, I mean, it's a pretty long book series, mm. but basically... Basically, they're on another planet. And any... I oh, will think about this as well because Elon Musk is a big proponent of this and he says that uh, if this was a game, it has to be more fantastical and more uh, more entertaining than the real real world life. That's not to yeah. say that technology is not better. That technology would be better if they created this. But maybe it's less boring and maybe there's things that we can do here that you can't do anywhere else. Because if I make a game, I want it to be a fun game, more exciting than our own reality... Because well, I don't, I don't want to make a, lo- a game of just this life. I want to make it more fantastic and people are more inclined to play. So basically, that's the setting of this. That means that wherever else you would come from may have better uh, technology, but it's not as exciting. Mm. And this is why I always think that certain animals will do literally anything they can do to survive. Humans, will, we're built to survive. All we want to do is survive for as long as possible. And whenever I think about that, You'll go to the ends of the earth to, to make sure you're alive, always. Mm-hmm. Your body has these functions that will never let you drown, you know what I mean? You're always trying to do something to survive. And to think about that, if that's built inside of our DNA, every, li- every living thing's DNA wants to survive. It's almost like we inherently know how good it is to be here. Yeah. It's like it's a, such a blessing, the biggest blessing it could be to be alive in this sort of format. We want to be here as long as possible. Survive. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that thought alone makes me excited. It makes me excited to, to learn and grow and to stick around for as long as I can, you know what I mean? And also, like, in, in that sticking around, what we're trying to do here is say, now that we're given the game is life theory, is to say the next part of it, which is the player one mentality. So what that is saying is to, number one, understand that you are in a game and view the world from that particular perspective. If you have nothing to choose or if you want to just experiment and play around, this is the recommended instruction, the guideline. No one, you can do whatever you want, but view it through that lens and then apply the play one mentality. Okay, not only is this a game, not only is this the way I see things that can be solved, upgrade, learn, I'm the player one. 
I'm the main person in this game. I am a player one. Not only are you playing the game like you're playing FIFA and you have the control in your hand, you're the player in the game. So if you know that, then that means that, that that's very powerful, that's strong, because that's solid. You know, okay, it's up to me. That gives you choice. So therefore, I'm going to try and do all these other things and play the game correctly. You can take the leveling up principle and say, okay, I'm going to level up about I'm going to level, level myself up in whatever ways I feel I need to. In whatever capacity, as an overall capacity, as a human, I want to level up emotionally, physically, whatever. Or you can go to your work and be like, okay, I'm in my workplace. How do I level up as, as, a, as a worker right now? I need to be more efficient with my time. Maybe I need to take more breaks. Maybe I need to make these calls first, those calls last. last. You can level up. Um, or you can say, I'm player one. I'm going to go out there and start to learn learn the landscape of this game that I'm in. What happens when I interact with people? What do people generally do when you do certain things? How do people react emotionally, physically? Um, just start to learn. And then go out there and try and hit that main objective. Try and, try, and, try and beat the boss. And if you don't, come back and do the next things that are needed in the game. Learn more, upgrade more, reapply again. And in that process, that's when you marry those two ideas together, I'm player one, and this is a game, you realize that there's so many things you can really get done. And yeah. that's why it, we say it frees you a little bit. Perhaps you can understand it a bit better now because all the regular stresses of life, which are very, very viable stresses, like, like they, they're there for a reason, you can approach them in a different way, in a, in a really good way, in a solid way, that can yield real results. Yeah, we've well, seen can, this in our own lives yeah. you can approach those problems in the same format as if it was a game to <coughs> overcome if it was a mini game mm -hmm. so it's like every problem you have is a mini game it's like how do I solve this little game right in front of me do you know what I mean whatever it is maybe, the biggest one's always money for some reason mm. that's the biggest key that holds a lot of people down but you just treat that as a little game of its own do you know what I mean and you, that's I a little side yeah. mission little, little side game that you play everything you do it's like there's millions of games within inside this one game, which is why it's so mm. so amazing and complex. But treat everything as if it was a game, and how to how to play it, and how to beat it, and how to win. Don't the the biggest thing I think with the game is that there's always a rules. There's always rules and certain guidelines in every game. But I feel like this game of life, these rules and guidelines, yeah, for sure they're here. But I think most of them are made for. To be bent, to be bent a little, a little bit, flexibility. be flexible yeah. and try and bend them to your own will. This is what I mean by player one. I think yeah. a player one is the sort of person that realizes that and then start to use them to their advantage. Because it's like when you see a big line of people, they're trying to they're trying to fit for this one little door. And if the objective is to get to the other side, but you see everyone else, they're following the rules. Yeah, it says go this way. Mm -hmm. And they're all trying to go for this one little door. And then I look to the side and what do you know, there's another door, I walk straight in, I'm on, I'm on it. And I'm done, 30 yeah. seconds, I've solved the problem. That's the sort of mindset I'm, I'm talking about. Obviously that's a very simple one, but, but the exact same process. Everywhere. If the same pro if the ideal version is to, we gotta get a thousand, a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. All right, I'm only getting paid like 30 bucks an hour. Oh, damn it, it's gonna take me like a year and a half, two years to save that if I save X amount mm -hmm. per week. Start but if the goal is a hundred thousand dollars, let's go sell a product for 500 bucks we need to sell X amount of them and I can do that in two months. Bang, I've achieved the objective. I now have $100,000. So there's no timeline. There's no set timeline. There, that's the, the rule. That's, for example, the rule is get 100000 There's no... You've got freedom. Yeah, freedom can, to choose how you decide to do that's that. That's the player one mindset because that's a great example of how it, can, how it can be applied as an asset to look at a problem, a situation from the player one perspective. And outside of finances, let's say it's something as simple as communication let's say um, you are having trouble communicating with a great friend of yours a partner um, a colleague whatever step back say okay let's if this is just a game this is just another problem how do I solve this maybe understanding a little bit more about human nature doing your own little bit of research on emotional intelligence on communication skills on how best to get a point across learning how to listen reading the right text and then trying to level up then upgrading again applying those principles and then go out there and take action that reapplication principle that principle number five or four to reapply okay now I've learned a little bit more I've 
I think I've leveled up my communication skills. I'm not going to get as flustered and angry. And if someone's angry with me and they're talking, I'm going to maybe step back a little bit and try and listen, and try and understand, and then see what I can say. Not in a manipulative sense, in a really genuine sense. That's another great example of how being a player one can assist you because you've leveled up. Now, guess what? If your character is a is someone that you can step back from and have a look at and observe, your, communi- your communication skills have just leveled up. Your maybe empathy skills have just leveled up. Um, reading, listening, speaking, writing. These are all communication skills. Listening is the one that we struggle with the most. All the others are readily available to us, but listening is a difficult one. Yeah. But that's just a little side tip. But um, leveling up all those different areas, your character is really growing. You can observe. That's something. It's a. It's a. It's an activity we actually participate in all the time. Like we've used an example a million times. We'll continue to do so. In terms of fighting, stepping back and looking at your at your human character, at your fighter as a profile of analytics. Okay. He's got good reach. He's got good distance management. He struggles to fight at, at close distance. Okay, that's that's the issue. How do we figure that? We need to acquire some close range counters, some close range defense, getting caught too much. Okay, what else? Maybe some, some footwork, evasive footwork to assist me in never getting there in the first place. Okay, what else? You can break it down. Okay, what footwork patterns? Go do your research, now start learning. Play, apply that principle, the learning part. Look at other players in the game that have done really well. Dominic Cruz has great footwork. Adesanya has great footwork. Cody Gabrant, TJ Dillashaw, okay? Let me watch these guys. Now you start to upgrade and equip. How? Get into the training lab, get in the training environment, whatever it is for you. Start training that skill set, leveling up and doing what you need to do. Come to sparring, reapply it. Take a fight, reapply it. You can really apply this game is life and play one mentality in so many things. Fighting's just a great way to really highlight it. But it's incredible. It's incredible. So that's why we, we think it's so damn valuable. And that's why you can probably tell it's a little bit more coherent than most of our conversations because we've tried to put a little bit of effort into try and structure it because we want to pass it on in a parcel as, as best as possible. Because we think that anyone that can listen and find it valuable can apply these things and exactly. give it a shot. Yeah. yeah and, and I guess the, 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 the whole thought pattern behind it is definitely um, valuable for us, but it's not to say that we've, we've clocked the game at all. No, I mean, we're still in this game, but uh, I think it's important that we start sharing it because we've been thinking about it for, man, like for three, four yeah, years now. It's all the time. And obviously we're still players in the game. We're still player ones in this game and we're still leveling up and growing, but it's almost as if, I'll share one little principle yeah. from the book that sort of makes sense is what I'm saying. So one principle behind the book is that the game's life is a training module mm-hmm. and you're only allowed, it's their school. So from when some fight when you start school about five years old to the age of eighteen and you become an adult. So from five to eighteen, you got a good thirteen years in the game. So you live multiple lifetimes in this game. And once you're eighteen, you move on to the real world with all this knowledge that you've just accumulated from all those different lifetimes. And then you're a better person in society and you grow from there. So from five to eighteen you're in the game. And then every time you go into the game, it's like you get credits. You get credits to spend on who your character is once you're going to go into the game. So, for example, I might... So, if I was putting in your DNA, maybe I purposely made my character to start off in a certain background, certain age, certain... Sorry, certain weight, certain build, certain sort of character, in, uh, intuition and mm. um, just baseline characteristics who the person was going to be, really base settings. Once I'm in, and I... And, and sorry, and you sort of set out certain life plans and little things that are going to mm. happen along the way that's in order to get you to your main objective whatever your main objective was let's say before i went to go into this game of life i'm trying to build a character who's going to be a great he's going to be a great leader i want him to really do big on let's say making weed legal let's say that's mm. what was my whole intention of making this character so i'm going to put him in a base setting maybe he's his parents were hippies and um they exposed him to him all the benefits of it Maybe he's got great communication skills to start off with. He goes from a little bit of hardship and he has certain people that he meets along the way. That teaches gonna, him what he needs. Exactly. Yeah. And put him in the right direction. You know, he gets a good opportunity here. He turns left there, expands his communication, gets into politics. And he has, he was set out from that, from the very, from day one, he was set out to do this thing and he goes and does it. And then in the long, in the way he learns and, and grows and he comes back. And now I have that, 
you know now I'm that person once I finish the game I've got that I'm yeah. a great leader I'm a great politician great I've got that now it's going again I'm lacking like right now let's say I'm going to go in the game again and I want to grill, build a great martial artist because yeah. I feel I need those skills mm. you know I'll go live a whole lifetime like the Matrix you're going to go download yeah, them dude. except this download for me it takes three weeks for the us in the game it takes a whole, whole lifetime, lifetime. Yeah. and I, three weeks later bang I've got a whole lifetime of experience now I'm a great martial artist now I'm going to go in again and inquire something else mm. so if you think about that what sort of um, what sort of blessings and, and characteristics do you think that you've been born with with everyone yeah. I'm talking to everyone right now so if you were born maybe in a harsh environment and you were supposed to learn and grow um, a, certain, a certain faith or you were a certain build even a certain build yeah. if I'm a naturally I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a powerful guy I've got strong I've got a strong base strong legs um, I've got good hips you know what I mean and it's like why was I born that way okay then it's you like start what to was I what so what I are those do? sort of fundamentals good for if, mm. for you in your case you were born you were born with great metabolism mm. you're lengthy you're a great you're okay, great I, white great yeah. weight and it's almost like you were built to be a fighter yeah. do you understand what I'm saying so it's like so you're not even so much be a fighter but yeah. it's, it'd be a great There's tool attributes. that you have yeah. you have great tools and attributes that you may have put before yeah. you started this game so you got to f- kind of figure out what would I best apply these things to yeah and then so who am I right them? now yeah. I guess the best age is probably around your 20s mm. once you start to be a bit more aware of who you are you've already gone through some things you're already a certain person by now mm. so around this age you should sort of understand yourself a bit know you what you like and what you don't like and it's like why do I like that thing maybe I already I told myself if I'm outside of the game I said I want to be like this do you know what I mean so it's like all, right, all these things yeah. I like now and the things I don't type of person I am I did it for a reason what am I going to do from here on yeah. that coexists with who I am so as you can see this is a framework of thinking so in fact you could call it a paradigm a paradigm being a certain way of viewing anything in this situation a certain way of viewing the world so adopting that paradigm for example it's, it's like putting on a pair of sunnies and now you see the world through that particular lens so you put on that game is life pair of pair of sunnies <laughs> and you're looking out and that's what you see in that particular way and then you see how that can be applied with the player one mindset and how you can reap plenty of plenty of rewards but um that's it that, that that's for me that's the majority of of, of how we were how we were tying everything in Is there yeah. anything else well i mean a few great resources that are worth checking For out sure. that will definitely help you mm-hmm. probably understand a bit better and maybe take on um, this this mindset. Number one is the game of Lo- the game is life by Terry Schott, the book series yeah. we read. Um, number two, obviously check out a lot of Joe Rogan stuff, especially the one with Elon Musk. Mm-hmm. Elon Musk is a big proponent of the whole simulation theory. Guy Ritchie, the film director, who uh, had a made, great podcast with um, Joe had, Rogan had as well. He made The Gentleman and King Arthur. Mm-hmm. He likes talking about the, um, the concept of a game. Nick Bostrom, who put forth the simulation theory, mm-hmm. um, world-renowned scientist. And outside business. of that, is there any, are there any others? Uh, no, I guess that's, that's, that's a good Outside of that, you'll see that you can find it in so many oh, different yeah. ways. Like, Josh and I are constantly messaging each other's different videos and that where we've seen a certain clip. For example, I just watched the Guy Ritchie clip where he's discussing why when you wear a suit, you need to own the suit. You can go watch that and see the benefit of that interview yourself. But he talks about people saying, look, don't hate the player, hate the game. He goes, don't worry about that phrase. Don't hate the game. Love the game because you're in the game. He's like, go into the rules and play the game. And that's, that's what he's saying. So that's another instance, an uh, early instance of where we recognize something as a, damn, this is another little gem. Someone else applying that game theory and we pass it on to each other and hopefully to everyone else. Yeah. Um, well, what's his name good with that as well? Because like before, how I was hmm. talking about the concept of having side missions in the main quest of life. And if those side missions are whatever topic you want to choose, whatever problem that comes up, if you treat each of them like a game, for example, how Kerry Packer, remember how Kerry Packer mm. would, did that speech about the tax and he would, didn't want to pay, he's like, I'll never pay, I pay my tax to the, to the dollar. Yeah. I don't pay a cent more and a cent less because the government's not going to use it properly anyway. Mm. So if you treat the tax game like a game that yeah. it is and you understand the rules of how tax works, how you can leverage the certain parts, mm-hmm. And that's why the rich obviously get richer because they leverage big businesses don't even pay tax because yeah. they leverage it with donations and yeah. all that sort of thing. So if you play the game the way that 
things are supposed to be played, you can reap so many benefits from them. So it's not to say, that's why you say, don't hate the game, because you're in the game whether you like yeah. it or not. Exactly. So that's why, it, oh, exactly. Like, you can look at any scenario and you can um, apply this this sort of thinking to it and you'll find so many value and it's fun it's fun another element of life that we both do is that we've got to remain playful dude we've got to remain playful because when we remain playful in all things it's very conducive to learning this is proven and I like when I read that book um, Peak by Anders Ericsson on athletic no on performance in general and how to be a high level performer and he says a high an aspect of high level performers is learning and another aspect of learning is playfulness when you keep things playful you, you actually are able to learn much better yeah and that's why if learning is one of those principles of the game being playful will help you to play the game better it okay. helps in its own way yes um and it's good for memory as well it's good for memory it's a good lot for of the guys things, at the yeah. world championship memory guys they make every whatever they have to remember they make it into a little game yeah. and it's easier to remember so and they'll make it a cheeky little image yes, and then that, yeah, that'll yeah. be their thing to remember that um, and it's it, again that's why I'm saying it's fun it's fun to engage in this process if you think to yourself what and who can I build it's not oh I'm building something fake or not. no 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 it's there's all the potential within you for example I have set my objective in this game as fulfill my potential constantly reach your potential and when you think about your potential and understand that it's unlimited it's a great place to start <laughs> because if you can really get anywhere close to near which you're not going to but you set that as your goal you're going to do quite a lot it's like starting on a blank canvas almost so you get to know and understand that here i am what can i become who can i the who's the version of myself i'm going to meet in 10 years um i want to see that guy what is he going to look like he's going to be fit, healthy, strong, what else are you going to be? Compassionate, firm, um, whatever other characteristics you admire and think that that should be a part of yourself, you can imbue them into the future version of yourself by starting to work on them now. And like my, my old man said, me, me and Josh were chilling with my dad earlier today and he dropped a gem that many people have heard. He goes, in your youth, in your 20s in particular, is where you should start planting all the seeds because you'll reap those things later on. So that concept can be tied into this same thing. Also adopting a bit of a long-term mentality to the game. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon, but really striving for things with the alacrity and the energy and the zest of you want it now, but understanding that there's time. Being in that balance is great. And these are only things that me and you can learn about because something we're great at is being radically open-minded. We got that one from Ray Dalio. And by doing that, you're, you're open to many other areas of learning and growth and content. Can you imagine this content people won't read because they just put it to the side automatically because they're like, oh, that, that part of their mind is closed off to that. Like, don't worry about this. It's not real. I'm not going to read it. Imagine if you read something and you go, damn, this is pretty damn good. Yeah, I That's, understand. Yeah. You can change the course of your life from that, that alone. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I thought, um, we were talking as well about certain things so for example if whoever I am outside of this this game was to put certain things into play that would happen at certain times and stages of your life for example everyone knows that uh, I got diagnosed with a tumour last year and obviously that changed the course of my life alone the way that I think about things the way I think about my mortality really treating life as if it's game living uh, to the best of my ability and sharing being open minded beforehand I was none of those I wouldn't do any of those but maybe but I was always always growing and I always had these things inside of me. I just never brought them out. And then being diagnosed with that, I'm like, damn, I've got to start doing it. So maybe if, if I was a player outside of this game and I put my character, yeah, when he gets 23, he's going to get diagnosed with this and this changes the course of his life. He goes into the direction that he was trajectory. supposed to be. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, it's exciting to know that. So wherever you are right now, it's always exciting to know that you're going to have so many more opportunities that pop up in the future. Mm. And that's exciting, you know. It's, it's not like I'm um, here. I am at this stage. This is what I think that life is, and all it is, and all it has to offer. No, it only takes one little thing, and it and changes it. everything. Yeah. You see everything differently. You live differently. You're happier, and it's like that's exciting to know. The best times in my life haven't happened yeah. yet. You know, exactly. It's like it's just the, the the idea that when you start getting long term and you start embracing everything, you go, damn, 
if I've learned, for example, if, you go, if I've learned so much and experienced and had so much fun, so many downs, so many negatives, so many positives just this year alone, and this keeps happening year after year, guess what? There's going to be many more years of many other things positive, negative, that you're going to experience and it's all part of it. You're going to enjoy it. Some of the best times, some of the worst times may or may not be ahead. Um, you have an active role in playing. That in, in, in You can seriously, truly push a few levers in the direction that you want to end up. Yes. So why not, why not do that? And I, th- I guess the, the other thing I want to make clear as well is that I don't want people to get the wrong idea of thinking, oh, if life's just a game, then uh, I'm not going to take it that serious. Mm. You know, I'm just going to, I'll come out of this game and I'll have another shot next time. There's one concept in the book that makes you, that counteracts that opinion. Because I had that as well. I'm like, oh, well, if I fuck this life up, I've got another yeah. one anyway. Well, the, what happens in the game is life in the book is that once you reach 18, you have your last play and that's it. You're not coming back here anymore. You can stay wherever it is you are. And if you think about base reality being a little bit boring than what real life is, that's a, that's a bad thought to have. So it's like, if this is my last, I want everyone to pretend that this is their last life, their last yeah. one. Because after this, when, you, when you're gone, you're 18 and you live in the real world and everything's the way it is. Yeah. So if this is so fantastic, if we all cling to life because it's so amazing here, you've got to think this is my last play. And if you live like that, you will do all the things in your mind that you want to be. You will reach your full potential mm. because it's like, all right, um, I'm not saying rush it, but I'm saying pretend you're not coming back here. This is your last time ever. So whatever's in your, whatever your goals and objectives and whatever the things you want to do and say, do all of them. Do all of them right now. Do you know what I mean? Don't hold back. Yeah. Don't not say that because <coughs> you're embarrassed. All Holding back is, is really not in a negative way. But it's really silly when you when you start to think about it. There's no real there's no real benefit to holding back. Well, if you think about it like this, they talk about this in any game anyway. Any game has NPCs. You have players and you have NPCs. NPCs are non-player characters. So the simulations, AI little simulations, aren't real. So anytime that um, I'm amongst other players, I feel that I really resonate with them because I feel that they're an actual player in this game. They're trying to learn and grow. And they're on their path as well. Anytime I run to someone that's just com- talking bland. absolute shit, bland, no ambition, just negative victim mentality, to me, I don't waste my time with them. I'm like, you're just an NPC anyway. You're not really a real character. And that mindset helps me. So I don't want to waste my time and energy on this sort of yeah. person if they're not going to be in my life anyway. So I'm like, well, they're not even a really a player. Whatever opinions that they, they have that are against me, yeah, I'm sure I might take them on board, yeah. but I'm not really paying too much attention to you. It just is leave it yeah. you're not really a real thing anyway and I continue on with other players and myself I think of it in the sense of whether NPC or not I just think okay you run into certain people and you go there's another player one whether he labels it at that or not this is someone that is a player one and this is who I want to spend my time with this is the kind of people I want to be around because who you, who you spend your time with is very important okay you've got to be very cautious of things which may be stealing your time, as Jim Rohn put it. Be very cautious of things which may be taking your time because time is capital, actually, capital to be utilized. Doesn't mean you can't waste it sometimes. It is what it is. People spend money on leisure activities. You can spend your time on leisure and kicking back and doing what it is you need to do going out. It's okay. But there are some people who outside of that, you might communicate with them in such a bland outlook, real negative, real, it goes, no, I don't want that. You're not playing the game that I, the way I want to play it, so therefore I don't want to be hanging around you because that's going to influence me. You've got to be cautious of what kind of inputs are coming in. But at the same time, it's also a game. So if you, if you do mess up and you find yourself with the wrong crowd for a little while, it is what it is. It's part of the experience. Part of the experience. Reapply, learn, yeah. upgrade, level up, reattempt. And I always yeah. think about the concept of the game wants... So if let's say that outside of this world... If I'm the one that created the whole game and the game is life, this big simulation, my whole purpose of creating this game is to make the... Because if it's a school, a schooling program, I want the players to have all sorts of experiences so they come out more educated, mm. a better person, and they move on and help our life, to, yeah? Yeah. So I think about this simulation, this game, this big thing that we call life, as if it pushes us into certain nooks and crannies where things happen and we've got to show resolve and show our character become better because of those things. Mm. So all those negative things that happen, it's really just like a little test the game throws at you. 
throws you a little test. He's a little boss, a little side mm. boss. Try and beat this little boss. Mm. If you can, you level up and you go to the next one. And it wants you to be better. It's trying to encourage you to be the best version of yourself because that's what we need outside. We need to be more educated, more compassionate, more just a growth. And game theory, player one or not, whatever it is, I think everyone that has ever really truly pursued something that they loved consistently and hasn't given up on the first of you one of the first few attempts you realize things start to kind of go well for you okay eventually things will start to start little things will happen and you go okay good next keep working and when those things happen and you've adopted that mentality and the stress is alleviated from regular super serious life when the little setbacks happen they're not really as daunting because you think to yourself hey this is part of it when i overcome this guess what I'm gonna have acquired a new skill, a new ability. Like when I was trapped in Thailand, homeless for that first night, guess what, I got some resilience out of it. I got some stress management out of it. I got some other resources out of it, some other abilities. With what just happened to your leg in the surgery, look at all the other positives you got out of it. The strength, the mentality, the the, the change of trajectory sometimes. Um, It is what it is. And I don't wanna say, it's kind of in that dilemma where we're both like, we don't wanna, really try and force too much but this is the best we can do to put out as coherently as we can our thoughts on game theory and play one and for you to do as you may we really think this could benefit a lot of people we know it can because it's such a great way of thinking it's a great tool if you're going to think and exist anyway why not do so in a way that's going to give you some benefits going to help you yeah exactly i think regardless of religion or not to have some sort of faith in something and in, in, in our mindset, having faith of in the game and that we're leveling up as characters, it gives me a better... Some, it gives you it's sort of a faith purpose, in yourself. You know? yeah. yeah, to know that, all right, why am I here? I'm Some people one. get lost, you know? Like, what am I here? What am I doing? All right, if my whole purpose here is to learn and grow and reach my full potential that I can be, then there you go. Start yeah. living life towards that. Doesn't, doesn't mean you have to have that one big passion. Some people do already, and that's great. Start pursuing that if you haven't already. Or maybe if you haven't figured it out yet, that's fine. Just keep whatever the path that gets you towards growing and becoming better as a person, that's the main overarching goal anyway. And if you get a certain passion in something along the way, follow that to the end. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's just going to keep you encouraging that main goal. You have a talent or a passion goal. in something, a talent or a passion in something, you should really try and pursue it. And a little hint or advice I would be able to give on people saying I might be a bit lost in what an objective or goal is, try and see whatever it is you're passionate about and say that's where i'm gonna go that's the direction i'm headed in if you're passionate about animals or you're passionate about let's say something even let's say you're passionate about fruits go in that direction start learning more about it figuring out how do people make money in this particular area how can i contribute in this area where can i put my energy you put it in something that you're passionate about everyone knows it's much easier to engage in something it's like when you're in that subject in high school that you really hated that class felt an extra hour long. But that sport class, for myself personally, it felt like it just flew right by because it's exactly what you wanted to be doing, even if you're struggling through it. Yeah. And I guess on, on that note, hopefully you can understand a little bit more when we say the phrase, the game is life and you are player one. You can kind of understand a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, this is what I mean by it. Another great resource. The game is life and you are player one. That's yes. it. That's really, that's really it. Exactly. Go on. Um, another great resource I just want to throw out so if you're struggling to find your passion and what it is um, the book you recommended to me actually called Mastery by Mm. Robert Greene that's all about finding your passion and then becoming a master within Mm -hmm. it and it gives you good examples of it that's a really good one so if you're struggling to find it or you're struggling to progress in what it is you know what it is but you're struggling to progress read Mastery by Robert Greene we should provide a we should put together start putting together because we'll probably end up having putting this together for quite some while not really a um, not really a rules book but like a, a manual yeah I thought about that a eh? manual when we could throw in even some resources that we've come across resources other people such as Seven Habits Principles yeah. some of those even links to those um, uh, videos that we've seen little snippets of interviews yeah. gems gems well we can always put uh, I'll do it in this one anyway I'll put some things in the description yeah put some things but we'll really start people compiling people to check out and then uh, obviously we'll put links out or maybe on our YouTube or our Instagram that you can go and watch things that we're engaging anyway and if you want to read the benefits that's cool and I think over the course of a few hundred episodes of the Play One podcast we'll compile it compile it all together in one sort of because you know I mean do. this is what episode four or five mm. and we have some sort of 
um, our thesis on what the player yeah. one mindset is and the game's life. After a hundred and something episodes, we're going to have a more informed uh, opinion and that'd be great to put it, compile it all together. And I was, yeah, and it, it could even be a live document that everyone can see, such as a Google Doc, but they can't edit. Um, yeah. But they can see as we continue to, to upload oh, yeah, and add yeah. things to it. So it'll grow as, as, as we grow the, the manual. And we'll constantly restructure it. We won't put any, we won't attach any kind of s- structure to it, but we'll just yeah try our best. But um, yeah, well, in the meantime, for along the podcast, for along the socials, Instagram, mm-hmm. YouTube, uh, we'll put as many links as we can that are going to help you. Uh, and the whole point of the podcast, when we talk about getting player ones on, this is what we're saying. Mm. Other people are on the same journey of yeah. reaching their full potential. <clears throat> With each guest, that's what you're going to get. You're not getting and any NPCs, you're no. just getting the players. Yeah, No boring people that really are doing their thing. This could be someone regular, but in life, guess what? They're really out there pursuing what they want. And I was thinking of how best to summarize what it is we're going to be talking about. But really, the most concise way to summarize this is in that phrase that we've been saying and that's what we'll end it on the game is life and you are player one act accordingly adios see you next time